Hi, this is Shaw Darby. In this video, I will give you an introduction to Java server pages. What are Java server pages? Well, Java server pages are also known as JSPs. JSPs give you similar functionality to servlets, meaning that they can generate HTML content on the fly and perform Java code processing. Well, you may wonder, how are JSPs different from servlets? Well, with JSPs, there's no need to write a Java class. You simply just add Java snippets to an existing HTML page. The Java code that's in the JSP page is actually processed on the server, hence the name Java Server Pages. Let's take a look at our first JSP. So a JSP is simply an HTML file with small bits of Java code inside of it. So here, I have this file called mycalculator.jsp. And I look at the file, it's a normal HTML page. We have a body section and we can put in any HTML here. So for this example, we simply put HTML created by Matilda goes here, just any other stuff. Then I move on down and I say, you may not know two plus two is, and then note what I have highlighted in red. This is what we call a JSP expression. So this is actual Java code that'll be executed and processed on the server. So I have the angle bracket percent and the equal symbol. And then I have in this example, two plus two with the percent angle bracket. So again, this code is processed on the server. The result of this expression will be included in the HTML page. So this value of two plus two equals four, the value of four will be included in the resulting HTML page. I can access this servlet with HTTP colon localhost 8080 lesson 27 mycalculator.jsp. And we'll actually see this in the demo coming up. All right, so let's go ahead and move into Eclipse. We'll look at the source code for lesson 27. I'll expand the folders here. I'll move into the web content directory. There's a number of JSP files. Uh, we'll actually start with this first file here, mycalculator.jsp. And I'll just double click this and open it. So again, remember a JSP is simply an HTML page with small bits of Java code inside of it. So I'll just move down to the body section of this HTML page. So this is the actual HTML body. And again, this is very similar to what we saw in the previous slide. So here's the one main line we wanna focus on here. So here it says, you may not know that two plus two is, and then we just drop in our JSP expression. And again, remember we use the angle bracket percent to denote that we have a JSP expression. So here I have angle bracket percent with an equal symbol. It's gonna evaluate two plus two. The result of this is four. It's gonna be included in the output page that's returned to the browser. And again, remember that this code is processed on the server side. All right, so let's go ahead and run this application. So I'll just right click on the file, mycalculator.jsp. I'll say run as, and then run on server. The first thing it's gonna do, it's prompt me to which server to run it on. So I'll choose the Glassfish 4 that we set up in the previous videos. And I'll also check the box to always use this server when running this project, just so they don't ask us, ask us this question again. And I'll just hit finish. And what it'll do is it'll bring up the browser. It's gonna process this file, so note the URL at the top. And then it'll, we have our basic information here, but the key item is what I just highlighted. You know, you may not know that two plus two is four. And so the value of four was evaluated on the server side because of that JSP expression. And the result is included right here in this output page. So this looks really good. Our JSP page is processing as desired. All right, so when you're building a JSP page, JSP actually provides a number of built-in objects that you can use, meaning that you get these objects for free. So let's go through the list. And this is not an exhaustive list, just a list of the most commonly used JSP objects. So first off, we have the request object, which is the same thing as the HTTP servlet request. So you can use this for reading form data. Uh, the response object, again, similar to the HTTP servlet response object, and you can use this to perform um, additional re response processing. 
Um, the out object is one that you'll commonly use. Uh, this is used for sending data to the HTML page if you're inside of a JSP scriptlet. And we'll see this on the next page. Um, there's also support for the session and application object, which are analogous to the servlet HTTP session and also the servlet context. And there's others out there. You can look at the JSP documentation for the complete list. All right, so now let's take a look at a JSP scriptlet. So a JSP scriptlet is basically just a section of Java code that you can add into your HTML page or your JSP page and allows you to drop in multiple lines of JSP code. So let's look at this file here on the slide, looper.jsp. Um, I have an HTML body and inside the body, then I can make use of this angle bracket percent and I can just write Java code and I can write as much or as little Java code as I'd like. So in this example, I simply want to do a for loop. So I want to loop 10 times. So I'll set up a, a for loop saying int i equals one, i is less than equal to 10, i plus plus, and then I say out dot print line. So remember that out object is one of the implicit objects or built in objects that we get for free. And I can use this out object to print information to the HTML page. So I print out the value of I plus a BR and that's the HTML command to just give me a um, carriage return or a line break. And then I just continue the for loop. And then at the bottom here, we can access this page by going to lesson 27 slash looper dot JSP. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, clean up here and let's move back into our web content folder. I'm going to create that new file that we just saw looper.jsp. So I'll right click on web content. I'll say new and I'll move down and say JSP file. So we're creating a new JSP file at this time. They'll bring up the window. The actual name I'm going to give for the file is looper.jsp. And once I'm happy with the file name here, I'll go ahead and hit click finish. So this will give me a very basic HTML file. Uh, what I'll do is I'll actually just drop in some code that I already have and we can just kind of walk through it together. So this thing will set up a um, heading three for looper demo and an HR. Then I'll just kind of focus in on a real part right here. So this is where I'll do a loop for 10 items. I use the angle bracket percent to let you know that I'm using a JSP scriptlet. And then I just set up my for loop for I as one, I is less than equal to 10, I plus plus, I'll print line I plus the BR. And remember the BR is for the line break. And that's basically it for writing the code here for our JSP for doing the looping. All right, so let's go ahead and run this page, our looper.jsp. So first I need to save the code here and then just right click on looper.jsp, right click, choose run as, run on server. And this will bring up the browser and we can see the output for the looper demo, the values of one to 10. This was all generated by the JSP scriptlet that we had created earlier in the JSP file. So as you can see, this is very useful and we can use JSP for generating HTML content on the fly. So this works out as desired. Good job. Well, that wraps up our video. In this video, I gave you an introduction to Java server pages.